Are you looking to build your very own Shopify business? If you are, listen up. Because in this video, I'm gonna share with you the top seven mistakes that beginners make when they're building their very own Shopify business and what you should do to avoid them. What is up everybody, Fred Lamb here and welcome to my next video where today I'm actually going to go into detail on the top seven mistakes that newbies make when it comes to building their very own Shopify business. And in fact, even those that already have an existing Shopify business, you may be making these mistakes as well. But before I get into this, make sure that you smash the like button subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell so that each time I release a brand new video, you're gonna get notified right away. Now, over the last several years, I've been very grateful to actually have helped thousands of beginners to actually build their very own Shopify business. Now, during this time, we also have hit a record high of over $46 million worth of student results. That's literally unheard of in our industry. And I'm super proud and super grateful to be helping these beginners to start owning a business and actually generate an income online. Now, over the past several years, at the same time, it gave me the opportunity to also see what mistakes students are making and actually including the mistakes that I've been making so that I can actually share them all with you to shortcut your way to success and avoid these costly mistakes. So let's get into what these seven mistakes are. Mistake number one is that most people try to sell products that are already available in retail store. Now, if you actually go to a mall or you go to Walmart or a local mom and pop shop, if you already see that item available for purchase right on the spot, chances for you to actually sell that product online is gonna be very slim. And the reason why I say that is because by the time that these local businesses got their inventory from wherever manufacturer they're getting it from and actually have it stocked and available in their store, during that time, people have already been selling that online for a long period of time. So when you actually start to sell that product that's already available in retail, you have zero competitive advantage over anyone else, except if you are going into a pricing war. Now, if you go into a pricing war, the issue is, is that you will not have enough margins to actually start advertising and start getting traffic to your website. So a lot of times I see students selling products again that you can actually buy at a retail store. Never do that. And as a matter of fact, if you have a product that you can actually say that it's not available in any retail store, chances for you to actually sell that product is extremely high. So if I were you, go to the mall, Go to a local mom and pop business that you are in the niche of. Let's say that if you are into kitchen or selling kitchen items, go to simply Bed Bath & Beyond. See what they are already selling and avoid selling those products in your store. Now, mistake number two, it's having too many variants. It baffles me when I actually do store reviews and I see students having 10 or more variants that their customers can actually choose. This is going to actually bring choice overload. And studies have shown that when there are too many choices for consumers to choose, they will actually not end up making a decision on buying the product or not. So for you, you want to actually keep it as linear and as simple as possible. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any variants for people to choose between colors and all those other fancy things, you can have them, but only have three or four at max. If you have too many variants, people will not be able to make a decision and they will not buy from you. Mistake number three, it's very important. You actually do not listen to the data. When it comes to advertising online or running an online business, it really boils down into two phases. Number one, marketing the product. Number two, to see if the math makes sense. 
So if you start running Facebook ads and you're not getting any clicks, let alone your click through rate has been horrendous. People are basically telling you they are not interested in what you actually have to offer. When that happens, simply drop the product and move on. Because the goal when it comes to building a drop shipping Shopify business, your entire goal is simply to really rapid fire test products and find a product that your audience actually wants and monetize from it. But if the first point of interaction where your product is your ad and you actually serve it to the audience and they are not even interested in what you have to sell, guess what? That means that it will never sell. Even if you love the product a lot, don't be attached to it, drop the product and move on. And that's the beauty when it comes to drop shipping is because you get to actually test products after products after products until you find that one product that's gonna actually generate six to even seven figures, all right? Now, mistake number four is that you don't have any reviews in your page. It's very important that you actually take reviews into your product page. People buy based on what other people are saying about your product. So if you are advertising a product with zero reviews, people will actually feel a little bit turned off and they will actually not want to buy. But at the same time, if you have a decent amount of reviews in your product page, people saying they love the product, how amazing it is, and having third party perspective on selling the product on your behalf, that works phenomenally well. So try to actually get as much review as possible right inside your store. Mistake number five is that you have too many apps right in your store. Yep, you heard that right. When it comes to building a Shopify business, the beauty about Shopify is that you get to actually add in different apps that is available in the app marketplace, kind of like an Apple app store that you can actually download more apps onto your phone, you can do that for your website or I should say your Shopify store as well. But when you start to have too many apps right into your store, the problem comes up, which is simply having too many things happening on your website. And in fact, if you have a lot of apps into your store, it actually reduces the site speed which will actually affect conversion as well. So you gotta be very focused on what apps you must have and what app you actually do not need. Because remember, the more app you have, the less your conversion rate is going to be because of the site speed. And also, I'm actually baffled when I see this as well during store reviews, is that people have too many pop-ups happening right on their website. There's gonna be like an email pop-up, a messenger pop-up, a uh, spin the wheel pop up, pop up on basically showing who bought what. If you have too many pop up, it does look a little bit spammy. So try to actually have just a maximum of two pop ups at a max. Don't have too many things happening because again, you want to specifically tell the consumer on one linear outcome, which is to look at the product, add to cart and check out. Anything above and beyond that should be helping on actually getting the person to actually add to cart. So again, if you have a lot of pop-ups on your website, make sure that you absolutely have to get them removed. Now, mistake number six, oops, number six, is simply copying trending products. Man, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt, even my students always say, Fred, my product is not working, but I see other people selling a lot of this product online. I keep seeing their Facebook ad. Yes, you are seeing a lot of people that are selling trending products, but you may never actually get it to work. And the reason why is very simple. The people that have a trending product, they may have bought the product in bulk already, so that their cost is actually a lot less than what you are buying for. Secondly, they would have a lot of pixel data to actually start running lookalike audiences so that their conversion rate is gonna be a lot higher than yours. So at the same time, don't be blindfolded the fact that if it is considered a trending product, you copy it, it's gonna work for you. It doesn't always work that way. Like I said earlier, you gotta let the data tell you the story. And in fact, here's one thing that I can tell you. You can actually copy someone's training product 
and get them out of market by increasing the average order value. So again, a trending product doesn't mean that it's always going to be a product that you can copy and it will work. There are additional work involved in the background for you to actually get trending products to work. And in my personal belief is that if you are in your niche and you spot a new product that got released, you can actually turn that product into a trending product. So instead of you copying other people's trending product, people are gonna start copying you. But that's gonna be a good thing, because by the time that you actually make the product a trending product, you are gonna actually cash in a lot of profits by doing so. So at the end of the day, I always tell my students, you have to be within your niche. Because if you're not in your niche, you will not know what product's gonna work and what product is actually new that you can actually take advantage of for your business. Now, the last mistake that a lot of people make is doing it alone. I'm gonna be honest with you. You can do it alone and it will work, but it will take you a longer time. Instead, you should actually look into finding a mentor and actually learning from people that have already done it. Now, I'm not giving you a shameless plug on telling you that you should be buying my courses, buying my programs, and listen to everything I say. It's just that in general, if you want to actually shortcut your way to success, learn from someone that has already done it and let them share with you their feedback, their success, their failures, so that you can actually shortcut your way. And that is very important. Yes, you can constantly consume all the videos on YouTube and actually do it on your own. That is totally fine. But then if you really want to shortcut your way and avoid pitfalls and avoid mistakes, find a mentor. This is super important. Then again, it doesn't even matter if you're building a Shopify business or not. Even if you want to actually learn yoga, you would still need a teacher and a mentor to actually help you, to teach you how to actually do yoga. So at the end of the day, don't be simply in, like don't be in a position where you're like, I can do it myself. You can, I'm not saying you can't, but what I'm actually saying is if you need help, just get the help that you need because it will shortcut your way to success. So again, I hope these seven mistakes that I share with you is gonna actually help you and give you an aha moment. It's actually very important that you understand these mistakes so that you absolutely do not make them. And actually, if you do, it will cost you money. So avoid making these seven mistakes if you are drop shipping right on Shopify. Other than that, Listen, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so that each time I release a brand new video, you're gonna get notified right away. Till next time.